In today's tutorial video, I show you how to create a pressure test using colour pencils and the reasons why you should be doing it before every piece of work. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this short tutorial video. This is kind of a repeat of a previous video that I did quite a while ago about pressure tests and knowing how much pressure to use with your colour pencils. Every artist is different, but for those of you that particularly follow my tutorials, I do need people to understand how much pressure I mean when I'm working and I say a light layer um, or a slightly heavy pressure, heavier pressure layer. Now the original video that I did was using watercolour pencils, exactly the same principle and it's something that I teach at the beginning of all of my workshops um, because people have, I've done this, people that have got done this pressure test following my previous video have come back to me and what they thought was their lightest touch, lightest pressure was actually a 9 to 10 on my pressure scale, whereas I'm working with say a two to three, um, possibly a three to four. This is, so basically what this means is with your pressure test, we start by doing some little, so taking some of our pencils, so like our white, gray, some of our mid-tone colors and also our black. And um, this on the left-hand side is where we start to apply some pigment down and it's a lot of it is a very tactile, it's about touch and feel and if you can feel the pencil touching your support, especially pastel matte or any sanded paper, if you can feel it, it doesn't matter that you can't quite see it by eye, by, by your naked eye, it means that that pigment is going down. Um, and what this is referred to quite often is where your pencils have got the very, very lightest of touch on this end is where they're whispering. And as we gradually move our way across the paper, we start to build the pressure in our pencil application until right over here, we're pressing as hard as possible. And at this point, it's equivalent or described as making your pencils scream. So we whisper, we gradually build the volume, sort of talking normally, and then we start to shout until the point where we are screaming. And then I split mine down just here with a little guide. And I put one to two pressure, three to five, six to eight, nine to ten. And this is where I try to explain to my students following my tutorials. This is roughly what pressure I'm using for most of my layers. And I'd rather you use, it doesn't matter if the end result needs to be three lots of nine to ten pressure. I'd rather you got there by putting down sort of ten lots of three to four pressure because it just you don't damage the tooth of the paper it allows you to then make more changes as you go along it gives a much better finish if you go in there with a really really hard pressure it just crushes the tooth and gives a really flat look it doesn't allow for other colors um, to be mixed and blended on top so with that in mind i say here's the original piece that um, i would do with watercolor pencils so we see here we've got whispering here on one end and with watercolor pencils i'll pop up the link here in the corner to that video less is more so here you can see very 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 fine amount of pigment that's gone down but when you add the water it does brighten up it loses it quite a bit with the lighter shades but there is pigment there then obviously up here this is our darkest intensity so we get that's our lovely range of values there showing up really well. So again, like I said, do this for whatever colour paper you're using as well. If you change the colour of your paper. Um, so like I say here, this is the anthracite pastel map, which is the darkest. And here we've got the brown. Um, so I'm going to do it today. You can see here, this is one I started off um, just with a student recently. So we're going to start off. I'm just going to show you what I mean by putting that pencil layer down. So I'll just grab the white because this is just done with a white pencil and what I'm going to do is just show here where you hold your pencil. Let me get a whole pencil that will help much better. 
So where you hold your pencil is very important as well. So if you find you have got quite a heavy touch, if you hold your pencil somewhere up here in the middle, you can only put down quite a light pressure. Um, the further you move your faint fingers up the pencil, the more pressure you can use. And you can also switch your grip so that for the really heaviest pressure, your finger is there right on, on the end and you can press as hard as you like. So with that in mind, I'm going to go back and grab my pencil. My pencil's a little bit shorter, but again, I'm going to hold it further away, further up the actual pencil shaft. And then for my lightest pressure, literally, I can feel that going down. And then as I come along, I'm just going to start to build that pressure, build that pressure, build that pressure until this bottom end, I am finger up here and I'm pressing as hard as I can. You can go back over that area if you like. If I just show you that on the camera. So here we are whispering, building the pressure all the way across until we're making those pencils scream. I'm just going to grab my black now as well. Now obviously we'll go for the, the extremes on this version. Okay, so I'll just come along here. Actually, that's not a black. I've actually got a dark sepia, but it goes to show this is one of the darks. So again, hold the pencil halfway up. That's the lightest pressure. As we start to come along, take notice, feel that pressure, get a good feel for it as well. And as we come down here, moving my finger up the pencil until we get to the end and we're pressing as hard as we can. Okay, so again, I would come in here, this area here would be my level of application. So this is my level sort of three to five, and this would be my my light layers. So when I say to you, build, build lots and lots and lots of light layers, it's repeating, building, building, building. I'm lifting the pencil with each stroke here. And you can see now, I put quite a few layers on there of this pressure three, but it's starting to build up a nice value equivalent to about an eight over here. And I can keep going and also change directions. So I make sure I'm sinking that into the tooth. Keep building, keep building. Of course, normally you'd be building other colors into this, but I've not damaged the tooth in any way. And by doing this, it means that over here I might have crushed the tooth and damaged it, but by building this lovely and gently, it means I can go in at any point with even my white and I can just flick beautiful lines over the top of those darks. Okay, I'll just hold that up so you can just see that. So that is what I mean when I say to you, please do your pressure test. And so many of you have come back to me having done tutorials and you've said, oh, one of the lessons that you learned was that you should really have done your pressure test before you commenced your work because it saved, for the sake of just doing that, just two or three minutes, just trying that out, taking a few of your colours, your lights and darks, onto your, the colour of the pastel mat or your support, whatever kind of paper it is you're using. If you, just by doing that before you start, you get a feel. Because sometimes one sheet of pastel mat in anthracite might have a slightly different finish um, from the manufacturing process uh, in quality compared to another sheet that comes from a different manufacturing batch. So it's worth just trying it out to make sure you've got a feel for your paper before you go in and do your live real piece um, so say if you're doing a piece that's going to take you 15 20 hours to do what's five minutes in the bigger picture okay so that is a quick overrun of the pressure test and what it means and why i really think it's important for you to do it okay so thank you very much for watching if you like the video please tick the thumbs up button and if you haven't already subscribed i'd love it if you do tick that box as well please. Thank you very much for watching and I'll speak to you all again soon.